Hi all, welcome to the April Chapter Congress call. Uh, glad that you all made it into Zoom. If you haven't yet, uh, check out the Chapter of Congress agenda. We have an icebreaker question as per usual. Uh, Carlos, actually, thank you, just dropped it into the chat window of the, uh, of the Zoom conference for those who are on Zoom live on video. Our icebreaker question tonight is, what is your favorite dessert? So we'll give folks another minute or so to get on the line um, while we answer the icebreaker question. There are some really delicious ones. I know for East Coasters, you guys are probably at dessert time. I haven't yet eaten dinner here yet on the West Coast, and now all I want to eat is like brownies and ice cream and cheesecake um, and mm -hmm. exercise my right to be an adult and have dessert for dinner. All right, my clock says that we're five minutes after the hour. Um, so I will go ahead and uh, kick us off with some of the national network updates. And then uh, I think Carlos, you're on the agenda after I am. So I'll hand it over to you. And then I think from there, we can just hand it off to the regional leads uh, for you all to lead the various portions of the call. Um, I'm excited about tonight's chapter of Congress call because this is actually the first chapter of Congress call uh, where the agenda was developed uh, almost entirely by chapter leaders and by the regional leads, uh, which is a big step forward for chapter of Congress and for the network and for uh, chapter of Congress being a more grassroots chapter led space. Um, they've done an incredible job pulling together all of this information and putting together this agenda and I'm excited for us to get into it. Um, so starting with some of the national updates, um, as you've hopefully heard by now, the national conference is coming up in Indianapolis. We are in the midst of early bird registration right now. Um, and so registration is discounted. This is the best time to register and to share the information with your members to encourage them to register for the conference. Uh, if you're from a region that is in the Midwest or if you're from the Midwestern region, uh, your members may be able to travel to join us there in person, yeah. Um, if not, one thing you should also know is that we do offer a virtual component of the conference. So even if your members aren't able to travel from Los Angeles or the East Coast or uh, Birmingham or Austin, they can still be a part of the conference uh, virtually and see a portion of the content on uh, Monday during the third day of the conference. We also have some resources to help you share this information, um, including a justification toolkit that can help you or your members uh, gather support uh, in terms of professional development funding or time off to attend the conference. And also we have a promotional toolkit that already has tweets and Facebook posts put together that you can share with your members. Other things related to the conference, uh, the workshop RFPs are open. So we solicit um, an RFP for the general professional development day of the conference, which is Sunday and Monday. You can find that RFP on the conference website. And then we also have a workshop RFP that is just for you all as chapter leaders. So the first day and a half of the conference is what we call the Leaders Institute. And it's focused entirely on chapter leaders and chapter operations. And so we are uh, soliciting sessions for you all to share your knowledge and experience with other chapters in the network. Um, I see a question here in the agenda. Um, when will submitters be notified if they were chosen? We plan to have the schedule for the conference up during the first week of May. So you would be notified likely in the last week of April. Um, I think the committee meets around April 19th or 20th to make their selections. So if you were selected, you'd be notified in that last week of April. Um, all right, and we also have a need for um, volunteers 
who might be interested in helping to select the workshops that get chosen for the Leaders Institute. Uh, traditionally, we have chapter leaders weigh in on which sessions and content they'd find most valuable during that time. So if you are interested in being a part of reviewing those workshops, um, I think the best question, Brad, Jeff, you have been managing that process. Is that right? Should they reach out to you at chapter support at ynpn.org if they're interested? That's correct, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, if you're interested in being part of the committee to review the sessions, uh, you can reach out to Brad at chapter support at ynpn.org and just let him know that you're interested. Moving on from the conference, um, we have been communicating with you all as chapter congress reps and also through the general contact email addresses of your chapter about two important things um, one is the network investment fee so you all should have received invoices for your 2017 network investment those are due by april 25th uh, it is particularly critical and important that we get these in a prompt manner uh, for the purpose of YPN Nationals cash flow and also to cut down on the administrative overhead that it takes to follow up with chapters. Um, so if you have any issues with uh, submitting your network investment or you haven't yet received your invoice, you can reach out to uh, Jeff at jeffrey.key at ynpn.org and let him know that you've had an issue so that we can redress it as quickly as possible. The other item um, that we've been in communication with chapters about is the final steps of the Nation Builder data sync. So the majority of chapters have finished up their work, done what they needed to do to import their data and get their chapter uh, membership information synced with YNPN National, but we know that there are a few chapters out there who haven't yet finished the final steps and or who need some additional help with finishing the final steps. Jeff, uh, our network engagement associate, I believe has been in contact with everyone that we are aware of that needs help, but if you are having uh, difficulties making the final steps to syncing up your data with our database at National, or you need some additional support around Nation Builder, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to Jeff if you're not already in touch with him. Um, he is eager and happy to help, and we're eager to put the finishing touches on the Nation Builder data sync so that we can move forward with doing all of the incredible things that having all of the data in one place allows us to do. Uh, final YNPN national announcement uh, or news update is that later this year we're going to be sharing the YNPN national budget transparently. Um, we are doing this because we want to model the transparency that we want to see in the sector and also because we think it's a great opportunity to use the YNPN national budget as a learning tool to be able to provide some basic financial education to members and chapter leaders about how to um, read basic financial statements and how to look at a budget. Um, so on July 9th, our national board treasurer, Brandy, uh, Brandy Tuck will be providing uh, a basic training on how to read budgets and key financial documents. And then on July 18th, we'll be walking through the YNPN national budget and doing a Q&A about how it was put together, why we prioritize certain things the way that we do, um, and to talk about how we resource the work that we do at YNPN National. Um, we don't have registration links yet for this calls because we are anticipating that there will be quite popular and there will be people who are interested. And we're just trying to find a platform that uh, we have access to that can accommodate the number of people that we're expecting to attend. But we wanted to get to these dates so that you could put them on your calendars, let your fellow board members know, and even share them with your members if you think that members would be interested in some of the basic financial training and also learning a little bit more about YNPN National, our budget, and how we resource the work that we do. Um, so I'll pause there to see if there are any quick questions before I hand the mic over to Carlos. I see a question in the chat um, that says, what's the date for the trainings again? So on July 9th will be the training on how to read budgets and financial reports. And then July 18th will be the training where we will discuss uh, the YNPN national budget and do a Q&A. Any right. 
Thanks for your attention. And I'll hand it over to Carlos to talk a little bit about the affiliation agreement and next steps with um, reapproving a new agreement. Thanks, Jamie, and good evening, everybody. Um, first, I just wanna say uh, on behalf of all of the regional leads, uh, welcome to everyone and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I think once again we've got a pretty awesome turnout and I can't tell you how excited uh, that makes us to see such an active and engaged uh, network of chapter leaders. So thank you everyone for, for participating on tonight's call. Um, we hope this is something that we can uh, maintain throughout the rest of the, the calendar year and we appreciate you taking time out of your uh, busy schedules to join us on a call on a Tuesday night. Um, so affiliation agreement, um, as many of you know, uh, it is up to be expired at the end of this calendar year. Uh, the affiliation agreement is a pretty extensive document that binds us all together uh, as a network and a lot of time and effort was put into uh, drafting it together and, and a lot of time and energy was placed into making sure everybody was on board. Uh, so now that we are approaching uh, sort of the end of this first term under under the agreement. It's time for us to really think about um, moving forward and, and next steps uh, as it comes to a close. So the current agreement, uh, there is a link to it on the agenda, um, which everyone can view. I know some of you may have joined your chapters perhaps after this was signed. Um, I think it's very important for everyone to make sure to read it, um, to share with your chapters once again. Uh, again, this is a, a document that binds us all together as uh, as a network, and there are a lot of uh, it's it's pretty extensive. So it's it's a good fun read before bed uh, if you're looking for something to to entertain you. Um, but it's, I think it's very critical and important that everyone uh, is familiar with the terms of, of this document uh, and, and what that means for us as a network. So it's, we're at that point too, where uh, I think National is partic in particular is looking for feedback uh, on this agreement. Uh, nothing in it has really changed, but something that's up for consideration is this idea of going from an annual agreement to perhaps a semi-annual renewal or looking at uh, an agreement in which it just sort of renews automatically. Uh, and one of the questions we'll have to figure out is what does this look like if the fee structure has changed perhaps, but uh, I think we can all agree that this is something that would take up a lot of time for us as a network to review on an annual basis. Uh, so the opportunity to just have this be an automatically renewed agreement would really just save us as chapter leaders a lot of uh, a time and energy. Um, again, there haven't been uh, many changes made, any changes made to this agreement. Um, but we do have a mechanism to collect feedback from chapters. And this is something that uh, we wanna share with everybody. And again, why it's important for everyone to be familiar with the terms of this agreement and for everyone to read it very carefully uh, because we do want the feedback from chapters. Now that we've been under these terms for approximately two years now, um, we wanna make sure that this is a, 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 an awesome agreement. So uh, there is a link in the Google Docs um, I'm sorry, in the, Google, in the agenda uh, to a Google form in which chapters can submit feedback. Uh, we're asking that chapters submit this feedback by Friday, May 18th. Uh, all of this feedback is, will be shared with the national staff. Uh, it'll be reviewed by the regional leads um, and it'll really help us determine trends and uh, areas that we may need to deep dive into the future. Uh, so again, I uh, highly encourage everyone to reread the uh, affiliation agreement and to share with your, your chapters, chapter leaders, uh, and to th really think critically about uh, what this agreement means for you and for the network. And to again, share your feedback uh, with national and the regional leads by Friday, May 18th through the Google form. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Alrighty, in that case, uh, I will pass it on to Lee, who's going to tell us a little bit about the strategic plan. Hey, thanks, Carlos. So uh, in the Google Doc, uh, or in the agenda, we have about a f about three, four page long strategic plan. Uh, it's been worked over, it's been worked on, or it, it, it got worked on last year. 
Um, and what, what we can see is we have three different main points that we're trying to, three different results that we're trying to focus on. And a lot of that will be focused on during the conference as well as during the year itself. Um, the three results that we're looking at are emerging leaders are empowered and equipped with skills and competencies that they need to strengthen their communities. Uh, result two, uh, staff and leadership in the nonprofit sector represents the diversity of our communities. Result three, careers in the nonprofit sector are economically, individually, and organizationally sustainable. Uh, all three of these results are definitely key points, key areas that some of you as chapters have already been doing some kind of work on. But as a national, uh, as a national organization, we got to make sure that we ourselves have a strategic plan behind those results, trying to strengthen those results and make sure that as a national organization, we represent all three of those results the best way possible and can offer resources for you all to achieve these particular results as, well, as best as possible. Uh, Melissa uh, will be able to go into more detail about this uh, later on. Uh, and she can definitely tell you a little bit more about the, I guess, the thought process behind it, uh, about the strategic plan. And really, uh, we've seen a lot of different feedback. Like this was like a very collective uh, process itself in the forming of the strategic plan. Like we had, it, this wasn't just Jamie sitting down one day and like, hey, this is strategic plan. <laughs> this is like, hey, uh, different chapter leaders, a lot of folks have contributed to this particular plan and they've made a very, very concise document. Uh, usually when, when you see a strategic plan, it's like 30 pages and you have to, you know, like uh, take it day by day, page by page. But this is very concise, very right to the point, And it definitely is doable if we can work together. Yeah, I think Melissa is unable to join us this evening. So I'll be providing our kind of overview of the process and how we got to uh, where we're at now. So what is shared in the Google Doc agenda is a preview of the full strategic plan. Uh, so Lee is right, it is exactly just four pages, lots of bullet points that provide a pretty high level overview of the strategic results that we want to achieve over the next three years and also some of the programmatic strategies that we've identified as ways to achieve those results. Where we're at with the plan now is that we are putting together those programmatic strategies in more detail with some narrative about what exactly the program entails and also some budget numbers and estimations of the resources and capacity that it would take to make these programs feasible. So we are sharing this preview document with all of you to get some initial reactions and feedback um, and to like hear from you all about how, uh, whether the direction of this strategy resonates with you. Um, I think the regional leads have already asked some really great questions about the strategic plan and the shape it'll ultimately take. I imagine that you all could ask some more excellent questions and provide additional feedback. Um, and so from here, we are finished, we are continuing to flesh out those programmatic strategies and estimate that we'll have the strategic plan, the final strategic plan finished in June. To talk a little bit about how we got to this place, um, we began the strategic planning process about a year ago with an in-person board retreat with uh, the staff of YNPN National, the national board members, and our only regional lead at the time, Elena Daig from uh, YNPN Detroit. And we started talking about um, the results that we wanted YNPN to achieve and what it would mean for us to center results in our work. And rather than focusing on the activities that we do, focus on the impact that we want to have and what we want to achieve. From there, we had several conversations throughout 2017 with the network, among the staff and board, and among several chapter leader and member groups. So those of you who are at the 2017 conference in Atlanta may remember the strategic planning session that we did um, that involved brainstorming some of the programmatic strategies that you see, many of which you do see appear in the strategic plan as well as working with a strategic planning task force group that has a smaller group of chapter leaders and members that has provided feedback at various points towards the end of last year. So now we are at the point of uh, beginning to write up the plan and we are eager to hear um, your feedback and reactions uh, to what we've shared so far as we put the uh, programmatic strategies together and move towards the conclusion of the strategic planning process.
Tammy, were you leaving time specifically for feedback and reactions? Yeah, yeah I believe that was the intention. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure if I'd like jumped in. <laughs> um, all right, um, so I was I was a part of the the um, the task force or whatever we, we call it towards the end of last year. And so one thing I want to highlight specifically is around the advocacy piece. I think when we were having discussions, there was the advocacy piece was kind of up in the air. Do we want to focus on like like general issues? Do we want to, you know, talk about political issues? And I'm really happy to see that we're focusing specifically on issues that are important to the nonprofit sector specifically. Um, Cause I feel like we're in a, we're in a good space to advocate on those issues and be able to to influence organizations from both the inside and the outside uh, to make those changes. So I'm really happy to see that. Great. Thanks, Marcus, for sharing that perspective. there any other initial feedback or reactions? I know that some of you may be seeing this document for the first time in the agenda tonight. Um, so we certainly encourage you to share this with your fellow board members. Uh, we'll be sharing it in the chapter leader newsletter as well. This is something um, that you can feel free to start to discuss with members in terms of the strategic results and these priorities being centered in our work. Um, but we would welcome feedback after tonight as well. Once you have a chance to talk with fellow chapter board members um, or spend some time with the document. But uh, yeah, before we move on in the agenda, I wanna make sure that uh, we aren't missing any other feedback or reaction that folks have tonight. Um, I think what I really appreciate about these uh, three areas that um, we've decided to focus on is that there are areas in which we are already doing some work, um, national chapters and in some spaces together. So what I really appreciate is the fact that we've written it down, we've put it down into words and it gives us uh, some direction that we can all sort of rally around. And um, there's still certainly room for, for discussion amongst chapter leaders. And again, as Jamie pointed out, this is the first time some folks are looking at, at this document. Um, but that's one of the questions that us regional leads had was how do we put this into motion uh, together? Uh, there are some areas where chapters are doing some really great work. There are some areas where national is doing some really great work. So how do we bridge those two things together to make sure that we have the strongest YMPN network uh, possible? Thanks, Carlos. And Carlos led to a great segue to a discussion that we want to uh, have on future chapter Congress calls, which is how do we put this plan in motion to, as Carlos said, bridge the work that's happening at local chapters and at YNPN National to achieve the results in this plan. Um, we know that uh, making sure that every emerging leader in the sector is equipped with the skills and that the diversity of the sector represents the communities we serve and that careers are sustainable are really big, huge goals. And they're also goals that we at YNPN can't accomplish alone, nor can chapters or YNPN National move uh, move the sector forward without each other. And so as you all have a chance to take a look at the plan, we hope that you'll kind of be thinking about what might be some of the ways that we could work in coordination um, between national and local chapters so that we can be most effective in achieving these results. Um, as Carlos also lifted up, many of these issues that we are centering in our work still are reasons why YNPN was first founded 21 years ago. And unfortunately, we haven't seen these issues resolved, nor have we necessarily seen there be significant improvements in the working conditions or the diversity of the sector. Um, and so as we think about the strategic direction of this organization, it's particularly important to think about what we can do differently or more impactfully to hopefully finally start to address some of these systemic problems in the sector. Any last thoughts or reactions um, before we go on to hear from Rebecca and a recap of some of the things that the regional leads have been hearing in the conversations that they've been having with all of you? All right. 
Well, Rebecca, I will hand the mic over to you to hear what the regional leads conversations have uh, been turning up. Thanks, Janie. And I would just also, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I'd also like to echo Carlos's thanks to all of you for being on this call. It is really amazing to see so many great chapter leaders on the call because we were there in the days when there was just a, a, a small handful of us. So we'd love to just keep the momentum going with this. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, so Jamie, as Jamie mentioned, um, this is just kind of a, a touch point check-in. Uh, Bradley should uh, sent out some great emails to all of the chapters and CC each of the different regional leads on those. Um, that was in early March. And so um, if for some reason your chapter did not get an email or, or anything, that could be because we don't have your right contact information. So I have uh, I've put Bradley's email in in there so please just shoot that over to him because we're constantly trying to keep that list updated as uh as well as possible um some of us have gotten feedback from you all uh and we're still getting feedback so please continue to give us feedback on on how your chapter is doing on on um how you're staying connected with national we realize it can be difficult especially since you're we're all volunteer uh, here and you know this is one extra thing that you guys are doing so we can totally appreciate that capacity and, and scheduling can be an issue um, but I think that some of the themes that came out of our follow-ups with you all have been um, a continued interest in collaboration and sharing of resources across the networks um, there's great resources on the website and if you guys haven't signed up on the listserv, uh, the YNPN chapter listserv. That's a great other resource where you can send an, an email out and people will reply back with, um, you know, whatever question or, or issue you might have. Um, it's a great resource to get quick, some nice feedback from other chapters. But um, as regional leads, we are a resource here for you guys. So please don't hesitate to reach out to um, your various regional lead. We're happy to hop on a Zoom call like this with you or, you know, email back and forth. Um, and then, of course, you know, Jamie and Bradley are, are wonderful resources and Jeff as well on the national um, side um, of things. Uh, a couple other things, like I mentioned, uh, that we realize the challenges are just staying connected and up to date with national um, and just staying connected with with what's happening as well as keep maintaining your own chapters. So, you know, there's the, there's a general newsletter that hopefully you're on. Like I mentioned the listserv already. There's also a chapter leader newsletter that's more focused on chapter leaders specifically. So again, if you don't have access to those resources, please let either your regional lead know or let Bradley know and he will connect you to that kind of stuff. Um, and we realized too, another challenge is has been uh, succession planning and retaining the institutional knowledge at a chapter level. Um, so that's something that I think all the chapters have struggled with. I, I know when I was uh, president of YMP in St. Louis, that was one of our big things that we just tried to kind of streamline things to make sure that there was a, a plan in place for future leaders of the chapters. Um, again, great resources through national, but all of the regional leads are here to provide additional support to you all as well. Um, Try to think if there's anything else. But I think in this in the agenda right now, if you guys have any questions or feedback or comments, I'm going to mute myself if anyone wants to hop on. I'm just going to take the floor for one second. Um, I just was doing some housekeeping on who's all here just to make sure that we're kind of knowing which chapters are represented in Congress. And I had two folks that I um, wasn't sure which chapter they were with. Um, so Andrea Edelman, I know you're on the call. Which chapter were you with? Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, I'm with the San Francisco chapter. Okay, and I see that you're just in uh, um, my screen twice. So that's the only person then, so thank you. Yeah, sorry, thanks. That's all right.
Does anyone else have any other comments or feedback or anything they want to talk about right now related to connecting with your regional lead or uh, staying connected or issues or anything else that you want to bring up? All right. Well, if there's no other feedback um, related to the conversations and the work that's been happening with the regional lead so far, uh, I am not a fan of keeping people on a meeting past the completion of the agenda. Um, so we can kind of bring the call to a close, I suppose. Um, there are a couple of more things that um, Brad and the regional leads have included at the bottom of the agenda that I think will be really helpful if you're not familiar with those resources already. Um, so we have all of the chapter Congress calls for the rest of the year scheduled out. If you don't have them on your calendar yet, you can put them on your calendar now. Uh, there are also many of the chapter leader resources that Rebecca just mentioned listed at the bottom of the agenda. So if you aren't receiving the chapter leader newsletter, there's information on how to get that. If you haven't yet signed up as a chapter Congress rep, there's information on how to do that. If you're not getting the member newsletter, there's information about why that might be. And there's also information about the chapter leaders listserv, which is a really great resource and a way for you to ask other chapter leaders for support or advice um, or get feedback um, on programming or ideas that your chapter may have. Uh, I want to thank all of you again for joining us on the call this evening and I want to especially thank the regional leads uh, for the work that they've been doing. Uh, if you have never been on this side of an outreach process that involves reaching out to 40 plus chapters, you may not know that it's a lot of work and a lot of coordination, um, a lot of emails and a lot of phone conversations, um, but the regional leads have been incredibly excited about getting the chance to connect with other chapters and helping to uh, keep everyone engaged and moving forward together. Um, so I just want to give them big kudos for all of the time and effort that they have put into this outreach work and uh, making sure that YNPN National and the strategy conversations that are happening fully engage everyone in the network as much as possible. Uh, please feel free to reach out to the regional leads, to Brad at chapter support at ynpn.org or Jeff, whose email address is in the agenda. Um, I am also available um, if folks have questions. Uh, but since that's the conclusion of our agenda, we'll go ahead and wrap up for the evening. Uh, thank you all. Um, if you'd like to unmute, we can do our traditional uh, group goodbye and good night. Um, so goodbye, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, Bye. Thanks, Western yeah. Region. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs>